Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? This is me, your J. Shreen, Jennifer McCray, and I'm here to talk about something that is very graphic. So graphic, it's so graphic, it's just disgusting. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a warning graphic contents that's going to be discussed throughout this video. The videos, um, the, the name of the video is Munchausen by Proxy. White mother is accused of medically abusing her black adopted daughter. So this is a white mother, 31-year-old Sophie Hartman and her daughter, C.H., uh, that she's uh, alleged to have been abusing her uh, with medical treatments. Okay. you see that? Okay. So basically, Munchausen is by proxy. There's a, um, that's a, that's a mental disorder in which parents uh, make their children sick. They can do things uh, such as force them to uh, going to go harm, harmful procedures and treatments and receive unnecessary surgeries and all things of that nature. What we're going to talk about this is a case of uh, this little black African girl who was adopted by this white American mother and, how, and, the, and the suffering that she endured at the hands of this wicked witch of the West since she's from it takes place in Washington uh, State, and um, the source is New York Post, uh, May the 20th, 2021. Okay, Munchausen by proxy, white mother accused of medically abusing black adopted daughter. Okay, so basically it's, it's just tragic. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. People was making all kind of noises during this video. I live in a place where they're very noisy. <laughs> okay, so um, basically, it's this 31-year-old white American woman. She went to Africa and adopted some children. She adopted two little girls. They didn't give much detail about the backstory of the narrative of this of this of this narrative. They just said that she adopted two, you know, young black girls, little, little, little black girls from Zambia in Africa. And uh, they only focus on one, the one that's being medically abused, which is a form of child abuse. Okay, so, um, so, so. I'm sorry, y'all. They're just loud. So, uh, Sophie Hartman, uh, she's she's a single mother of two two black adopted children from Zambia and Africa. One of the little children, which they uh, anonymously called C.H., was forced to undergo unnecessary, uh, unnecessary surgical treatments, and uh. And, and uh, four, 470 unnecessary medical procedures. And she was only six years old at the time that this happened. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of this to you. And I'll make commentary throughout. And I'll make a little video about, I mean, show you a little video about what Munchausen's by proxy is. It's a horrific disease. It's a form of medical child abuse. Okay. So she would, so the little girl CH was forced to undergo numerous unnecessary surgeries, as I said, and 470 medical treatments, the authorities said. Um, so she also had her daughter wear her leg braces and went under the knife to install a feeding tube and a tube to flush out her intestines. Okay. 
So she's facing second degree charges of assault of a child and attempted assault of attempted assault of a child, a case medical experts call medical child abuse. Um so the doctor that discovered this, Dr. Rebecca uh, Weister, of the, the director of Seattle Children's Hospital, she filed a complaint and investigation on February the 19th of this year, 2021, that prompted the investigation by the Department of Children and Youth Services. Okay, so what they did basically was they had her in the, um, when the mother came in, she came in numerous times. She went to different hospitals, which is what they do. Uh, uh, they exhaust all the hospitals, so they'll have to automatically go to the same ones, you know, maybe not in, maybe not in close proximity, but, you know, later on. So they, they, the hospital was suspicious and they kept the girl under observation without her mother you know just the girl for six for 16 days and determined that she was medically healthy determined that she was medically healthy that there was nothing wrong with her despite her mother saying that she had a uh they uh a, a disease that I don't know if it's a real disease or she make it up called um, alternating hemophilia of childhood AHC. The letter said that the child was at a profound risk and it was co-signed by other physicians and was part of a charging document from the Kings County Prosecutor's Office, posted by um, newspaper KING 15 ABC. Harmon was charged after the child was uh, At that point, uh, during her admission, during that you know 16 hour period, there was no findings or reports of symptoms to support any of the prior diagnoses that she gave. So while they were there and she was barred from their band, then they saw that what she said was false. She made up the diseases and harmed the child. And it said, all the evidence obtained during the course of her admission suggests that CH is a, is a healthy six-year-old who will continue to benefit from de-escalation of medical support and normalization of childhood experience. Basically, they're saying getting her away from their wicked witch ass of a racist mother that she had. And that's, that's another thing. That's another interesting thing about this. Why does she have to go all the way to Africa to adopt? But they never said what happened to the other child. I, I'm, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. Okay. So, um, they never said what happened to the sister, but we only know what happened to CH. But why did she have to go all the way to Zambia in Africa and adopt two black children and abuse, medically abuse one of them? They were healthy children when she got when she got them from Africa. They never said what their ages were, but at the time of this investigation, she was six years old. Okay, so that the hospital said that uh, they need to get away from that racist, wicked witch, witch of a mother, and to uh, so that she could continue with the normalization of her childhood. So because she here she is, six years old, she's got feeding tubes, she's got uh, tubes to flush out, um, flush out. Uh, Tubes in her intestines to flush out her bowels. She's got all these procedures, and um, and she also the mother also uh had a tube implanted in her stomach 
so that she, you know, she would have to, I'm sorry. So she would have to have all her food, water, and medicine come directly from the tube into her stomach. And then we said she had the thing about flushing out her bowels. Then the adoptive mothers of an adoptive mother was asking for guess what surgical hormonal implant to suppress early onset puberty. Prosecutor said this is a six year old. She never got to experience normal childhood. She's back in the infancy. You saw in that picture where they had her with a pacifier. The, the, she the one was looking at her shields with the pacifier. That the child has the pacifier, and she's being fed, um, you know, through tubes. She's not able to eat properly. She can't walk. She's in braces and wheelchairs. So whoever, uh, whoever takes on this child, wherever they place her, she's gonna have to go through a painful series of like an infant when they learn to walk, and when they learn to use the bathroom. And things of that nature. And things of that nature. I'm sorry, y'all. My phone keep ringing. Um, but anyway, um, fundraisers were carried out um around this time, and and uh the, and Miss Hartman used funds from the pump fundraiser to purchase a a um wheelchair accessible vehicle. She also um, subjected the child to uh, to um, let me see. Oh, okay. It also says while all this was going on, she allegedly told told someone that CH would leave us at any time. And get this, y'all. Investigators said they found that after a court order that Hartman had done internet searches that included funeral songs and how to get paid to take care of a family member with a disability. This woman was looking to profit off this child. Normally, they don't look to profit off the children, but this woman was looking to profit from this child. If she was already researching all that, so she probably had insurance and everything on her. So um, we said that she had this rare neurologic that the doctors didn't even know about. And um, and she told the, one of the investigators that I know she was walking right now, but she was literally paralyzed all day yesterday. Sophie Hartman, she, they said this goes on about her adopting her sister. They never said what happened to her sister. Was she treated normally or was she abused? They didn't say that they took the child from the house like they took Sophie. I mean, like they took CH. They removed her from the house. And uh, But the other child never said anything about it. And that's questionable to me why they focus on one child. When this woman was dangerous. Um, so she uh, also invited Make-A-Wish to grant uh, CH uh, a wish. They didn't say what the wish was, but um, see, uh, Q13 TV said that the Make-A-Wish Foundation found this horrific and that they wished only that uh, justice, could be, justice could be done for the child and that she could return to being a normal six-year-old child. And that's going to be a lot of occupational physical therapy and everything they're going to have to do on this little girl. And um because of this 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 witch's um maltreatment of her uh the doctor from uh, her attorney said in a statement to KING that the allegations were false. The doctor from Seattle's Children's Hospital who's largely behind the charges in this case, is not an expert in, on this disease, the lawyer said. 
according to the radio, the uh, TV station. She probably has little or no experience in this disease. Now, this, do y'all, this is like those cases. Remember, deadly women? She would be considered one of those deadly women. You know, like instead of uh, poisoning their food and watching them die, gradually get sicker and sicker. And she pretending like she's so concerned um, and, 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 and just don't know what to do. Uh, it's kind of like that case, what she's doing with that kid. So she, I'm sure her story is going to be on Deadly Women eventually. But, um, and, and she was six years old, and she wanted her to not undergo puberty get an implant to not undergo puberty. She was nowhere near puberty age. You got to be 9 or 10 when you're near puberty age, 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever. But she was only 6 years old. Okay? So, um, the mom, obviously, this is, this is, this is another reason why black people don't like for white people to go to Africa and adopt their children. This is why black people in the United States and Africa, especially um um what you call it Ethiopia, they would not let any white Americans or Europeans, any European white Europeans uh adopt their kids. Cause they may end up like this little girl being forced to feeding tubes in her stomach. She can't eat because of feeding tubes for water, nutrition, medicine. She can't go to the bathroom because she has catheters and intubation tubes in her intestines for her bowels. This little girl went through hell. You know, this woman was evil, just true evil. Just and and that's another reason, you know, why they don't like like uh Americans to adopt the African kids. And you know another case, it's not a medical abuse, but it's questionable. Um uh of their own their own uh Cherise Cher Theron, I'm sorry, I can remember her thing. Cherise Theron adopted her little son, Henry, and dressed him like a girl from when he was about a toddler to now. So he's now classified as a trans girl. So they don't want, you know, white people adopting their kids <laughs> and, uh, and subjecting them to ridicule, and uh, humiliation, pain, uh, and, and, and in some cases, death. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you a little clip from the doctors that I got that's going to explain um, Munchausen by proxy in a little more detail. Lucy Rose's story is real yet still unbelievable dr judy can you talk a little bit about what exactly munchausen by proxy is how common it might be so munchausen by proxy is an illness where the person who's try to impose an illness on another person usually somebody that's in their care and they can actually impose this illness by inducing symptoms or doing things to actually physically make the person sick or they can just falsify things very dramatic in their presentation and oftentimes it's very hard to know this because they switch doctors they move so it's hard to keep track of the medical records themselves and I think a really important part of this is that we don't have good prevalence rates because people are not coming forward and saying this is what I'm doing to my child so what we guess though is that in hospital settings it's probably about one percent so it's not that uncommon but it is somewhat rare you mentioned Maybe a parent showing concern, but there are certain characteristics, maybe too much concern. Maybe That's right. 
some some red flags that that these individuals exhibit absolutely so one of the red flags is that they're very dramatic in their presentation of the child or whoever they're taking care of their symptoms they are very dramatic in the language that they use um they like to sort of be a medical marvel very some, some kind of medical mystery yes and there is a very controlling aspect where they will not allow you access to the patient without them being present and oftentimes they actually do come with some medical knowledge of their own either they they've been very well studied, they're a graduate student, or maybe they're even in the medical profession somehow, because it makes it easier for them to falsify these symptoms in a way that kind of makes sense. But a huge telltale sign is when what they're saying just doesn't match up to the medical and diagnostic testing. So that's basically it for, for that illness. Um, it is tragic. It's just, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, I've heard of it before, but I've never really investigated into it like I have this story right here. And... I'm sorry, I haven't investigated as I did this story right here. But you can you can imagine how the poor child feels, you know, and how oh just just I'm just speechless and I'm normally not speechless. But uh so uh if you can if you this oh and I wanna uh that my um thing from the doctors, I'm labeling that under fair use. For educational purposes because it's just telling about the story and it's the copyright of 1976 uh, fair use doctrine um, for scholarship research nonprofit and educational purposes and I just wanted to include that I used the doctor's video for that um, please leave a comment subscribe to my channel I have more more about medical and scientific racism and things of that nature. Uh, if you can, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification button and share this video if you can. Thank you and have a nice day.